part, then you want to be at 30% or lower with all of them. If I do the math in my head real quick, that's about 600 bucks. So you can do $600 per card. You got five cards. $600, that's $3,000. That's where you want to be when it comes to your debt. So you can get the most bang for your buck. Now, of course, the lower you go, so if you get down to 25%, you get down to 10%, you'll definitely see your credit score soar for you. All right, so maxing out your credit cards is not something that you want to do. That is a big mistake when people make all of the time when dealing with their credit. It's also not a good idea to do that with just the one card. So say you have all those cards, you got five of them, but only one card you use and you use it all the time and all the rest of them are all, um, you know, zero balance or you just got a couple hundred bucks on them. You don't want to max out that one card either. So a lot of people fall into that trap as well when they use their credit card exclusively for the entire month. They buy the gas, they buy the groceries with it, uh, they go to McDonald's with it or whatever. They use that one exclusively, even if they pay it off at the end of the month and sometimes depending on when your credit is checked or your credit is pulled and you um you know applying for something then it may show a huge balance you don't want to do that at all that hurts your credit as well all right so look we are all man we are past the halfway point of the show let me give a couple of shout outs right quick so let me give a happy birthday shout out to tamar big briggs she celebrated a birthday um this week so happy birthday to you today today is janelle douglas's birthday so Happy birthday to you, Janelle. Happy, happy birthday to you. And then I want to give a shout out to SWD. So that's Sandra Wells Davis. Her birthday um, is coming up as well. So happy birthday to you, Sandra Wells Davis or SWD. All right, so let's get into the question of the day. Question of the day is sponsored by none other than Cute as a Cupcake, Cupcakery and Bake Shop, where the cupcakes are more than just cute. They are delicious. Get by Cute as a Cupcake if you're in Maryville, Indiana, in the Northwest Indiana area, 2008 West 81st. That's 2008 West 81st in Maryville. Cute as a Cupcake. Get by there and tell them that the 800 credit score man sent you. All right. So our question, our question comes from, comes from Marcus. Marcus is out of the great state of North Dakota. So look, we got somebody from the North Dakota listening to the show. So Marcus says, what age should you, you start establishing credit? Well, Marcus, first of all, thank you very much for contacting me. You sent me an email. I appreciate it. We went back and forth a little bit. So what age should you start um, establishing credit? And the reason he's asking because he has a, a child that is in high school about to go off to college and he was just wondering how that whole thing would work for him so there is no magical age if you will in regards to when you want to start establishing credit you can do it when your child is younger i wouldn't suggest like 12 years old or 14 years old but 16 years old if you are a very good steward over your credit you should go ahead and you can start establishing credit for your child now, here's what I say, and here's how you do it, actually. What you want to do is, if you have a credit card yourself that you've had for a, an extended period of time, it's got a high limit to it and little to no balance on it, then you can add your child to um, that card as an authorized user. You do not have to, and I do not suggest that you give your child the actual credit card itself, but you can add them as an authorized user. The card will come to your home. It'll have the child's name on it. It won't have any kind of necessarily have any kind of restriction on it. If you got a $10,000 limit, if the kid gets the card and they go out and they buy a bunch of video games or whatever, then they can charge that money on it. So that's why you don't want to give it to them necessarily. But you can start by doing just that. If you add them to a card, you've never been late on it. So however long you've had it, even if your child is, say, 16, and you've had that card for 12 years, your child will get the full um, credit, if you will, for the entire time that you've had that particular card. So it'll look like they've had credit for a long time, and you can establish credit with them like that. I did that personally with my son. I think he was 17 when I um, added him as an authorized user on my card. I actually set up alerts on my card because I did give it to him when he was going out of town for a couple of weeks for emergency purposes only. And so I did set alerts on my um, 
on my credit card where at least I got an email or a text message if the card was used at all. Doesn't mean that it stopped the transaction or they were asking me for my permission to go ahead with the transaction, but at least I got um, an alert to know that the card was being uh, utilized. So you can do that and that's what I would suggest for you. Authorized user for your child and you can start at around 16, 17. I think that's perfectly fine to do that. What you don't want to do is, and a lot of people unfortunately do this, is to put your um, cable bill or your water bill or your energy bill in your child's name. I don't care if they're four years old or two years old and you owe the energy people 800 bucks. Don't do that because all you do is wind up ruining your child's credit before they even get here. Now, some of you out there are thinking, well, they can't really um, sign for it. And so if they have an issue um, you know, later on in life, then they can get it taken off because it wasn't really theirs. The problem with that is that they're going to have they're going to have to tell who did this. And then the company may come after you or maybe some prosecution involved, all of those kinds of things for fraud. So you do not want to do that at all. People, please, please, please do not do that. Do not do that to your kids and do not do that to yourself. So thank you very much. I appreciate it, Marcus. You are um, officially a part of the 800 Credit Score Man Show family. Thank you very much for contacting me. And if you have questions, contact me at 800creditscoreman at gmail.com contact me there of course you can always find me on facebook as 800 credit score man i'm also on instagram under the same name <clears throat> excuse me 800 credit score man and then on twitter i'm at credit score underscore man i always follow back on twitter most of the time i follow you back on instagram too but definitely on twitter it's at credit score underscore man on twitter follow me there ask your questions inbox me what have you so we can have a credit talk all right so all right thanks a lot and again the uh, question of the day is brought to you by cute as a cupcake the cupcakery and bake shop where the cupcakes are more than just cute they're delicious. 2008 West 81st in Maryville, Indiana. All right, so let's jump back into the 10 biggest mistakes you can make when dealing with your credit. So we went through four things in the top of the show. We went through four things. So now let's get to number five. Closing unused credit cards. Do not, do not close your unused credit cards. If you listen to last week's show, I talked about Vantage Score and how they're trying to throw a monkey wrench in this particular avenue, if you will, about your uh, credit cards. But until they get a lion's share or come close to 50% of the market, because FICO has 90 to 95% of the market when it deals with your credit and credit scores. And that means that typically if you go into a lender and you want to apply for a mortgage or a personal loan or whatever it is, they're going to pull a FICO score. And FICO is looking at the credit cards that you have. You do not want to um, close those unused cards. Even if you're not using them, you can leave them open because when you close them, you hurt yourself. And here's how you hurt yourself. One, you hurt yourself because you, when you close it, then that length of history that you've had. If you've had that card for seven years, then poof. That length of history is gone for you. If you've paid on it really, really well, then that is gone for you as well. So you don't get the credit for that, um, if you will. The credit in air quotes, you don't get that um, as well. And then it could hurt your debt utilization. Your debt utilization is 30% of your credit score. It's the second biggest thing after making your payments on time. So that can hurt your your debt utilization as well. So for example, if you have $10,000 worth of credit limits spread out on how many ever cards it is, and you have a $3,000 balance, you're at 30%. Perfect. You're at 30%. You're getting a lot of uh, points just because of that. Let's say you close one of those cards and it is now your limits are $9,000. Now you've pushed yourself past the 30%. You're at 33%, which isn't that bad. But however, you're over that threshold and your credit score will go down. So you don't want to do that at all. You don't want to close those unused credit cards. Now the question comes up, what if that card has an annual fee? Now that's a very good question. So if that card has an annual fee, then maybe, maybe, depending on your situation, you might want to close that card. So let's say you got a card, you got it um, when your credit score wasn't that great. Now your credit score has rebounded, it's recovered, it's um, restored. And so maybe you want to go ahead and close that card because you're not using it. 
and you're paying $45 a year or $75 a year or however much it is for that particular account, you may want to go ahead and close it, but strategically close it. Don't close that car right before you go to buy you a car because it's going to lower your credit score. Don't close that car right before you're going to um, apply for that mortgage because it's going to lower your credit score. And you'll be able to rebound rebound from it most likely you know, with over the next couple of months or what have you by paying on time and getting your debt utilization back down to under 30%. But you don't want to take that chance when you're going to apply for something else. So do not close those unused credit cards. Number six, making minimum payments. Now, this one is not necessarily so bad for your credit. But again, if you are maxing out those cards and you're making minimum payments, it's going to take you forever to pay them off. You can Google the calculator on um, the Internet and you can put in what your interest rate is. And if you pay that minimum payment and how much the balance is, and it'll tell you exactly how long it'll take you to pay it off. It'll also tell you how much more money you'll pay just by doing it by the minimum um, every month. It'll tell you those things. But also on your credit card statements now, they have to give you that information. So if you pay that twenty dollars a month on this thousand dollar debt, you'll be paying it for 10, 12, 13, 14 years, $20 a month. And you pay way more than that thousand dollars that you actually borrowed and you actually use. So don't make the minimum payments. All right. If you're in a snowball or in an avalanche type of situation where you're trying to pay off your credit cards, um, and if, you know, in a hurry, then you can make minimum payments because that's what the um, that's what those two strategies uh, call for. You can make minimum payments on one of those. Go back and listen to a show I did, and I told all about that. In my head, the title might have something about debt reduction in it. Go back and take a look at that, that, that show. Now, number seven, getting cash advances. If you're getting cash advances off your credit cards, that's definitely a no-no. It's a financial mistake. It is a financial mistake, I guess more so than a credit mistake, but that's how you get in trouble. When you do a cash advance, even if your um, your interest rate is a decent interest rate, the cash advance interest rates are much higher. So you're putting yourself in a hole. So don't use your credit card like it's an ATM. Don't do that. Number eight, viewing your credit cards as an emergency fund. Now, if you have no choice, you have no choice. I talked a couple of weeks ago about using it for an emergency. You know, if you got to get on a flight somewhere and you got to be there tomorrow and things like that. But you don't want to use it um, as your emergency fund. You want to go ahead and save up money in your own personal account, savings account, wherever you put it in your mattress, wherever you want to do with it. But you want to save up that money um, yourself so you don't have to use your credit cards and get into a financial situation where you can't handle. Again, like maxing out your credit cards simply because you didn't have any additional money saved up. All right, so before I jump to number nine and number 10, let me give a couple of more shout outs. I got a shout out, Pat Randall. Pat is celebrating your birthday coming up this week as well. So happy birthday to you, Pat. And I want to give a big, big shout out to Fatia Terrell. Happy, happy birthday to you. She celebrates a birthday on this coming Wednesday. This coming Wednesday is her birthday. Um, Fatia likes to fly around the country on her birthday. So I believe she's probably headed to Texas um, for her birthday. So happy, happy birthday to you, Fatia Terrell. Happy birthday. All right. So let's jump into uh, number nine and number 10 before we get out of here. So number nine, applying for credit at the wrong time. Now, I just kind of spoke about that a little bit before when you talk about, you know, uh, charging too much on your credit card right before you go apply for a loan somewhere. Do not go applying for credit all willy nilly. Be strategic about it. You don't have to take every credit card offer that comes to you in the mail, every email that comes to you, even if you have a credit card with a particular bank. And then oftentimes now they're sending you additional things so you can get a different card with this particular bank. Don't go applying for all of those things. Please do not do that. You don't want to do that because, one, you're going to get that inquiry. According to Experian, 5 to 10 points per inquiry that will come off of your credit report. And then also, when you do that, people always wonder, well, why did my credit score go down? You know, I just got approved, so my credit score must be pretty good. Why did it go down? It went down because, one, you had the inquiry, and, two, they have no idea Why are you getting this credit? Are you actually having an issue? So within a couple of months, your credit score should bounce back. 
um, if you're if you govern it correctly, it should bounce back. But initially, it's going to take a little dip because they have no idea what you're going to do with this particular this credit. So, one, if you're going to buy a home, please do not mess with your credit. Don't go out and get any credit cards or whatever. Not six months before, not six weeks before, 